In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Has it ever happened to you that you wanted to arrive at a certain destination in your car, and uh, this was maybe before the GPS, you got in your car, and maybe you had a Thomas guide. It turned out that uh, you thought you knew how to get there, but as you're driving, you became confused, and as a consequence, you got lost, and you were maybe driving around in circles. Uh, maybe you stopped someone, you rolled down the window and you asked the person where that place was and they gave you directions, but the directions were not right. Then maybe you stopped at a gas station and you asked the, the, uh, the owner of the stash, uh, gas station where the place was and the person um, tried to tell you, but it was just jumbled and confusing. And then finally, uh, you drove home and you got the map. The Thomas Guide, at least in California, has been one of the best maps that has been out for many times. Now it's a GPS. And then you follow the indications and you finally arrived at your destination. But first, you went through all of that confusion and the loss of time because you didn't have the right directions. I think there's all, this is a common experience for all of us that we've gotten lost. Let's apply this to our spiritual life. Do you think most people in the world know where they came from, where they're heading, what the purpose of their life is, what their ultimate destiny is, and how to get there? I would wage to say that most people don't have the foggiest idea as to their purpose of existence. Most people, they really don't know where they came from, why they're here, what their purpose in life is, and how to arrive at their final destiny. I'd say most people. Now, that being the case, I'd like to present to you a catechetical idea, which is very simple, and I'd like to give you a, at least the beginning part of the foundation of the spiritual exercises, so that you know where you came from. You know where you're heading. You know how to get there. You know what are the, the tools or the means you have to take to arrive at this final destiny. Let's start with a catechetical uh, statement. Years ago when when we were introduced to catechism using the, the famous Baltimore Catechism, which is still applicable today, the, um, one of the first things that we learned from the nuns and from our good parents was uh, we are created to know God, to love God, to serve God, 
and by means of that to save our immortal soul. Now you have you have probably heard that that catechetical principle before, but I wonder how 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 um how much time have we really spent meditating upon that? Maybe maybe very little. It might be just simply that we we memorized that years ago. It's up in the archives of our memory. However, what has happened is we really never meditate upon it in depth. We never really assimilated uh, what is the meaning of that. We never really took it to heart. Consequently, never really never really influenced our life in a profound way. It's so basic, and I think I probably learned that when I was in first grade, and I never forgot it. So let's just take those few words. We are created to know God. Do you think there's a parallel between that and the question that the man asked Jesus? He said, Lord, what is the greatest of all commandments? Jesus said this, quoting the great Shema of the Old Testament. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. There Jesus expressed what is called the double commandment. 